All right. Thank you. The nine nonprofit orgs in the conference. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> My name is Kishore Mandyam, and um, I'm an ISV, which means that we build apps that sit on the App Exchange. And uh, we have a bias towards mobile. Everything is on the phone. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is, to, is about empowering volunteers on the phone. Right? But before I start, you're all nonprofit people. Anybody from for profit world? You're from for profit. You're all nonprofit. For profit. For profit. <laughs> We're all for profit, personally. That's okay. <laughs> all right. Are you all admins? Every one of you? Okay. Any of you been a volunteer? You volunteer for your own orgs, for other orgs? Okay. So, from a volunteer perspective, as a volunteer, when you go out and volunteer for an org, you go out and put in two hours, five hours, 15 hours, whatever. How do you report that back to your org? What are typical? Any ideas? I'm sorry? I, I, I work for a lot of just organized groups. Okay. So I can kind of just write it down. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's okay. I'm not talking technology. You know, paper works. You work for 3,000 years. <laughs> but <laughs> any other ways? Is that typical? You have a register, you fill that in? Okay. Now let's take the other side. As an admin, do you take those volunteer hours back into Salesforce? No? Anybody done that? Okay. All right. Not yet. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So let's go one step further. As a nonprofit, your some of the key issues you deal with. You need to deal with volunteers. You need to operate. You need to deal with the operation, but you need to raise money. Any of you involved in the money raising side of nonprofit? You have? Okay. Now, how much of volunteering appears in your fundraising pitch? Well, we will take the fee aspect <coughs> off the board and spend it in the program and then we'll have the nonprofit take the fee aspect and use it as a household account. As a household account. All right. So, do you know what this number is? Ever, ever heard of this number? Okay, there is this nonprofit called Integrated Sectors, which is an organization of nonprofits. And every year, it assesses the value of a nonprofit hour. This is that value from 2016. So every hour, that somebody donates to a nonprofit is valued at $23.56. Why does this matter? I'll give you, there are, there are a number of examples we go out there. One of the classic examples of how they've used this number is a suicide hotline that used to list $40,000 as its budget went out and assessed the 7,200 hours that the volunteers put answering the phone, that comes to $140,000. You add that to your budget, you're now a $185,000 organization. Much easier to raise $30,000 when you call yourself a $185,000 organization than when you call yourself a $40,000 organization. That's the reason you value volunteer hours. Right? You put a number, the number exists. Any accountant will tell you that. Now, you can't put it on your accounting sheet. You can't go out and say, my profit and loss, my balance sheet has so many volunteer hours that there are some rules about FASB and so on and so forth. But these are numbers that you can use with your funders. You can go out and say, hey, you know what? I just put in $500,000 into my org because I have 100 people or 200 people that volunteer for me. 
That's the value of this number. So as somebody who engages with volunteers, our focus has to be to somehow up this number. How do we up it? There are at least three ways. And what I'm going to talk about is three ways we can do that with the phone and get that back into Salesforce. And then I'll come back and go through the same issues from a slightly different perspective, from a money perspective. Any questions? OK, so number one, do the numbers. That's an abacus, if you, have, if you guys are wondering what those <laughs> dots are. <laughs> OK, do the numbers. And there are lots of ways of doing numbers, and I will talk through that. That's number one. Number two, be social. Uh, all of you on Facebook? OK, social is extremely powerful. Do you tweet? Do you talk about your volunteer work on Facebook? You do? You do? Some of you do? It's extremely powerful, right? Social has, what, brought down presidents and made prime ministers, so it must be extremely powerful. We can use that from a telephone and, or from a phone, and we'll talk about that. And finally, map your world. And when I say map, I mean physically, on Google Maps, so on and so forth. Map your world. And that's what the phone gives you. Your phone, your volunteer's phone, gives you the ability to do these three things. And I've put these three things primarily in the context of saying, this is kind of a sequence. The first thing, the low-hanging fruit, is to go out and do the numbers. And say, this is the number of volunteers we had, this is the number of hours we had, and so on and so forth. You guys have used volunteers for Salesforce? Are you, you're familiar with V4S? OK. So V4S is an add-on for you know, some of you who are not in. Now, you know, we haven't heard that before. It's part of NPSP now, but it doesn't install itself. You need to install it separately if you install it on production org. But it gives you a bunch of things. It gives you three major things. It gives you the ability to set up jobs. It gives you the ability to set up shifts for those jobs. And it gives you the ability to set up volunteers, excuse me, or sign up volunteers for those shifts or for those jobs. So a job is like, Let's say a job without a shift. You know, every Monday morning you need somebody to come in and spend a couple of hours doing the books. Right? You may not have a time. You may not have a specific date. You just need a couple of hours from somebody. So you're going to set up a job that recurs, that starts every week, once a week. Right? And somebody will sign up and come up and do that. Whereas maybe every weekday night from 7 to 9, you need somebody manning the desk for some task that you've got. That's a shift. So you can go out and say, I've got a job called weeknight desk management or whatever, and I've got shifts five days a week. And you can set it up in V4S such that it'll actually create it automatically every week as you go forward. Every Sunday afternoon, it'll kick in and build five new shifts every week. Are you guys, have you guys tried this? Anybody? Oh, you know what I'm talking about. OK. So the advantage of that is once you set up a bunch of volunteers, Volunteers can come up to your website and sign up and say, oh, I'll be there on Tuesday night, I'll be there on Wednesday night, so on and so forth. But they need to do all this on the web. Right now, there are these things called sites pages, which are available. People come into your website and sign up. And what we're saying is you can make that easier. right? You can make all of these things significantly easier, primarily to enhance impact. That's what mobile is all about. If you empower your volunteers on the mobile, you can significantly enhance impact. And let's talk about how. Specifically, you got a volunteer. Extremely powerful resource. It's not 23 bucks. It's not 23 bucks. It's a lot more money. But how can you, what can you do giving her a phone? Put a phone in her hand. And oh, by the way, I have no words in my slides. So you know, pardon me for that. Signing up for jobs doesn't have to be like this. I, it doesn't have to be so complicated that I go to a website, I sign up, pick a job. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to make it. I told you I'd be there on Saturday morning, but I can't be. So I need to call somebody. Right? This is all too complex. And that somebody needs to be available. So now an org has to put somebody manning the phone or womaning the phone. Right? I'm sorry. Is, is that not true? You have somebody you know, taking calls all the time, coordinating these things. Why does it have to be? Put the power of being able to sign up, cancel, check in, check out, 
all of these things on the phone. There are apps for that. We have one. But there are apps for that. Go do that. And that's just the first step. Right? To me, that's low-hanging fruit. Then you go out and you give them ways to collaborate. Volunteers want to collaborate, particularly between volunteer managers and volunteers. You, you know, we have situations where um, volunteer manager has a tablet, people are coming in, checking in, checking out who's in here, who's not here. Hey, he's not here today, she's not here today, can you pick that up? You know, this kind of stuff. Replacements, collaboration, the phone is ideal for organizing those kinds of things. That's what you can do out there. And number three, appreciate volunteers. We all appreciate volunteers, right? We love the work that they do. Do we tell them? I'm sorry, I'm sounding, sounding like a child talking about his dad, but that's not true, right? We need to go out and tell volunteers. A great way to tell them is on their phone. Email works well, but email has a different kind of con connect. I mean, you guys will think about what you, the context of reading an email versus seeing a notification on your phone. Which is more personal? Think about that and see if you can do both. In some contexts, you send an email. In a lot of contexts, you push out a message saying, hey, thank you for being there yesterday. That makes a difference, right? And finally, at a volunteer level, you need to manage disinterest. You need to manage disengagement, if you will. Does that happen to you guys? Do volunteers drop off? That's typical, right? As the national statistic is anywhere between 20 and 40%. 20 and 40% of your volunteers are dropping off every single year. Give them a phone, or give them an app, and that drops. Now, give them an app that does a few more things, and that drops even further. What can social do for you? First, social is all about experience, my experience. I was there, I took this picture, I'm gonna stick it on Facebook, right? Or I am gonna be there, I'm gonna tweet about it, I have a bunch of friends that might be interested, three of them will land up. 15 of them liked my post, but three of them will land up. That's okay, right? That's about my experience. But social is about something else too. Social is about actually expanding impact. To go out and tell a story about what we did. And that is something the org can pick up. I go out and post something on Facebook. The same stuff is available in Salesforce. You guys all have enterprise orgs. That same data, that same picture, that same video can be made available in Salesforce. And you can use that to stitch a story. And that story is extremely powerful in two ways. Finding more volunteers, finding more money. Which is the be all and all of volunteer organizations, right? And all of that is available on the phone. Everything from your camera, Instagram, whatever you want to do. This device has everything in it to originate. You put the power of this device in the hands of the volunteer. That's what we're saying. And finally, there's a direction you want to go, you might want to think about. <laughs> this is questionable. I've, I've had people tell me, ah, this is a privacy issue. I'm not going to track people when they sign in and sign out. There are ways to deal with that. For example, you could build an app that just says, I'm gonna track you only when you check in. And stop tracking you when you check out. And why do you wanna track? You wanna track for a couple of reasons. One, you wanna map everywhere you've been. You wanna be able to say, I worked in downtown Chicago, but you know what? There are four different neighborhoods I worked in. I delivered 18,000 meals in 200 blocks. Whatever stats you want to do, you might want to figure out what kinds of volunteers are working in which areas. All that comes from the phone because the phone has that location tracking. But there's one other thing you do. It's not just where you've been, but where you can go. That's what location tracking will give you. Location tracking is not about trying to keep people honest. Although, if we have people that tell us, well, you know what? I want to know where she was when she checked in. That's fine. That's fine. You know, in, 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 uh, we have this um, org that does 
interventional processes with children, giving them horse rides, right? A lot of children, the people relate to horses very well. So there's this large farm in Northern California and children come in there with their parents, with tutors, with volunteers and get horse rides and spend an hour, two hours relating to the horses. So this huge place, it's you know, 360 acres. So they want to know where the volunteer was when she checked in, which gate did she come in? You know, what were the horses she went out with? You can actually map those trails. Those kinds of stuff you can do. And then you can say, hey, I'm using only south side of the range. Let's see if I can expand to other areas, right? Lots of stuff you can do with the map going forward. Am I making sense? Is this stuff you've tried? Does this seem too far out of the range of possibility? Then why is it not being tried? I'm just curious. Any ideas? All right, we'll see. We'll see. So this is what, you know, the standard pushback I hear is, you know what, oh, um, I've heard uh, people tell me our, our volunteers are all uh, seniors and uh, they don't want to use the mobile phone. You know what, I don't think so. Well, first of all, yes, baby boomers are a large part of volunteering, but 80, more than 85% of baby boomers use smartphones. Is it in our mind or is it in their mind? And they're all on Facebook, aren't they? <laughs> so what are we going to do? Why do we not give them something to use? So that, you know, all the usual things. And if you talk millennials, Gen X, always on the phone, right? It's <laughs> the one little notification about volunteering will help your cause. So this can be done. It's not that difficult to do. And finally, before I actually come to the end of my presentation. What can you do on the phone from a slightly different perspective? First, you can engage volunteers. We talked about that. You know, we've, uh, the whole engagement model about keeping them happy, so on and so forth. But there's a significant value for the organization, for the nonprofit, to get this data back from volunteer, and that's, that's what I talked about. But number two, you can make money. Like I said earlier, there are numbers, there are standard models proven multi, multiple times before to take the number of volunteers. All that you need to do is look in Salesforce. If your volunteers are, are in Salesforce, you know, there's this 990 that you fill out. You're actually supposed to put the volunteer hours on, my, on your 990 at the end of the year. And most organizations fudge it because they haven't tracked it. They have pieces of paper. Why does it have to be? It's got to be in Salesforce. You've got to be able to run a board in Salesforce saying, hey, I got a monthly number of hours, man. I can tell you, not just for the year, but I can tell you how many people were there in March 2015. That's the kind of sophistication Salesforce gives you. And we're all here because of that. That data should be in there. That data should get on your 990. That sh data should get on your marketing materials. Just filling the volunteer hours on the 990 takes 20 to 25 hours a year. Filling the 990 takes 221 hours a year. That's a lot of time. Put that in Salesforce. You can pull that up. And finally, you can save money. I think this is a no-brainer, right? Because like you said, there's paper, there's Excel. I've seen large organizations doing Excel. Okay, you import the data, and then why, right? And then you need to go reconcile the data. What somebody filled up on your website, if you look at volunteers for Salesforce, what somebody put on a website is not necessarily the number of hours you, you can actually show, especially if you have internal audits. How do you do that? Put that in their hands. And you'll save a lot of hours doing that reconciliation, doing that upgrade, upload, so on and so forth. That's really it. I don't have anything else to say. Any questions? Yes. I was really impressed with your demo on Salesforce and how you showed how you could use the internal audit to help your organization. Thank you. 
there are apps. Okay, are you asking if there are apps out there that do that? Yeah, there are apps out there. There's one app I know that you can actually use Process Builder with and trigger SMSs on specific events. Um, Salesforce doesn't have an SMS API. It's not native to Salesforce. But you, know, you, you can use external services. There are services that you can send an email to that will translate the email into an SMS. But then you know, the sender ID will be a little painful, but you could do that. You could do that, yeah. Okay. All right, hopefully it's been useful. Thank you. Thank you.